Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Over the past year, we've looked at some new variants of LED strip, and most recently it was the rise of Cobb style addressable LED strip. First, there was the 5 volt 332 LEDs a meter strip, which gives you insane resolution, but it was only 5 volts, so that comes with particular challenges. Later came the strip I call addressable. Neon, a 24 volt version with 5 centimeter zones, which is much easier to install. I think it's time we do a comparison to show you what's currently available so you can make the correct choice for your project. We're going to do that in two videos. This video will be about looking at 5 volt addressable Cobb LED strips in 60 LEDs a meter, 100 LEDs a meter, 160 LEDs a meter. 240 LEDs a meter and 332 LEDs a meter. Those are all individually addressable, so this should be quite interesting. All right, first we need to get some of the technical stuff out of the way. While doing so, I'll have some shots so you can already see what these LED strips kind of look like. During those shots, I'll have a text overlay of what you're actually seeing, or I'll try and explain. But later in the video, we'll be taking a look at detailed shots too. So, as mentioned, today's video is about 5 volt addressable Cobb LED strip with different densities of LEDs. Because these are 5 volt, each LED on these is individually addressable. No groups or anything like that. Okay, let's first take a quick look at my testing setup and then move on to the LEDs per channel talk, and after that, we'll talk power. For testing, I'm using a Meanwell LRS 600-5 power supply, which is capable of delivering up to 100 amps at 5 volt. I did a dedicated review video. Uh, you can check that out if you want. On top of that is a Quinn LED Dig Octa stack, consisting of a Power 7 board, which facilitates all power distribution, and includes input and output fuses and some onboard bulk capacitors combined with per port output capacitors to try and deliver the most stable power possible. Lastly, it features a broken fuse indicator light per port if anything goes wrong. On top of that power board, there is a stack of two times Quinn LED Dig Octa brain boards, which are both being powered using Q power post from the power board. I needed two because the amount of LEDs we're addressing in this test exceeds the total amount a single ESP32 can handle with a decent frame rate. More about that in a bit. Other than that, each brain board is connected to Ethernet and we're using a maximum of four of the eight LED output channels per board. About the brain boards, these provide fully level shifted output channels combined with resistor switchers per port to optimize the data signal for the type of cable being used. All of this is in a nice and small package using a 3D printed mount or lop from the Discord server designed. It makes for a really nice and small but powerful up to 50 amps in this configuration package. It's all running the latest version of WLED and brightness limiters and such are fully disabled. All right. Enough about the driving hardware, let's move on to the actual LED strips. All of these LED strips are of the same type, and that is the WS2811 protocol. This protocol is a fixed rate protocol, which means that the data signal always runs at 800 kilohertz, no matter if you have a single LED or 1000 LEDs. This has implications for how many LEDs you can run with a single data channel. I have a comprehensive article about this, and I recommend you go read that, but in there we see a little table we can use to highlight the issue of this. If you look at that table, when we have 100 LEDs on a single data channel, those LEDs can be updated 333 times per second, or as we'll call it, 333 FPS. That's quite good. But if we now connect 1000 LEDs to that single data channel, we see that we're only getting 33 updates per second, which can be considered slow, and that will be visible as stuttering animations, choppy transitions, and such issues. 
You want a decent amount of updates a second or FPS to make sure animations, transitions and such look nicely fluid and smooth. My general recommendation is that you shouldn't exceed 600 LEDs per data channel. Do you need more LEDs? Then do so using a second data channel. This way, all connected LEDs will remain nice and smooth and can still be used as a continuous LED strip for animations and such. As a quick note, with WLED on the ESP32, I recommend sticking at around max 2000 to 2500 LEDs per board, hence why we're using two synced brain boards today. So, looking at the strips we have today, this has some direct implications. I'll try and reflect that in this table here, which shows how many meters of strip you can run from a single data connection before exceeding that 600 LEDs total limit per data output. As you can see from the table, with 60 LEDs per meter, we can easily run up to 10 meters or 32 feet of LED strip without a problem. But even stepping up to 160 LEDs a meter, this decreases and we can't even run 4 meters or 13 feet anymore. So these LED strips are mostly suitable for situations where you need a short but high resolution strip. Generally, I advise this for projects that are going to be something close by and where maybe the LEDs themselves are directly visible. Here, for instance, are two projects like that. First is my heart light project that is still in my living room. I built last year during a live stream, which has the 332 LEDs of a meter strip in there. Since this strip is very close to the diffuser, a normal 50-50 style package LED strip would still be visible through the diffuser, but using these Cobb LED strips with a high density, it's so smooth and perfectly diffused. The high density also helps in regards to light output since it can become quite bright even with the diffuser on there. And here's another example. Although we built it with an LED strip which has 198 LEDs a meter, it's also a perfect example where a high density cob LED strip would really perform well. So projects that are close by, relatively short and hard to diffuse are excellent candidates for this type of strip. Although the strips can of course be used for larger or rather longer projects, please keep in mind you're going to need to do extra data cabling to make sure everything is going to run smooth. Even then, with, for instance, the 240 LEDs a meter strip, you are realistically only going to be able to run about 8 meters before the ESP32 itself becomes too slow. Right, during this video, I've already been showing you comparison shots taking of the strips lying on my desk, varying from having 300 LEDs lit on each roll, showing you the differences makes in regards to resolution, and also with more LEDs lit to show you the effects a little bit. Let's take a look at the LEDs from a top-down view and configure it in such a way that only the part visible in the camera is active at that time. This means animations will be calculated for the same length, but the amount of addressable LEDs in that length varies from, um, well, X to X. I forgot to note this in my script, but it'll be on the screen. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to the next topic, and that's power. How much power do these LED strips need? Well, instead of going through all the numbers in this video, take a look at this chart. This chart will also be available in a real-world power sheet article where you can look it up yourself and compare between 5 volt, 12 volt, and 24 volt, etc. Because of that, everything is noted in watts. If you study that sheet for a bit, you can see the Cobb style LED uses less power per LED than the generic 5050 package style LED like we see on WS2812B LED strip. Now, this doesn't mean all things are equal. For instance, this doesn't take into account the amount of light output that is actually being produced. Currently, I don't have a good method to measure and compare these, but I recommend sticking around and looking at my direct comparison shots later in this video, which should give you an indication. Back to power. Adding more LEDs per meter also means power required goes up. Basically, the variance with the higher densities, such as the 160, 240, and 332 LEDs a meter, you can see the power requirements actually rise above the normal 50-50 style WS2812B package strip. 
For these, you really want to start adding multiple injection points. For the 240 LEDs a meter and 330 LEDs a meter, you'll need one middle injection point about every two meters to make sure you don't run into massive voltage drop issues when running them near 100%. Another thing to note about the five millimeter strips, they will take in about two amps for an edge ejection point where a 10 millimeter one will take in about four amps. So that also means you'll have to do more injection points for longer lengths. So this again means that these strips are more suited for shorter projects than longer projects because especially at 5 volt, long 5 volt wires get need to be really thick and get really expensive real quick. <laughs> All right, let's do a quick summary of the strips you see on the screen again. Starting at the top, we have a standard 60 LEDs a meter WS2012B strip with an IP65 coating on top. Below that, we have a Cobb LED strip, which also has 60 LEDs a meter. Below that is a Cobb 100 LEDs a meter strip and then a 160 LEDs a meter strip. These three strips are all five millimeter wide. So next to having a high LED density, they're also very thin, making them an option for projects where you are maybe lining the edge of something or generally don't have a lot of space. Moving on, we have a 10 millimeter wide 240 LEDs a meter version and then the 332 LEDs a meter version I showed off in a dedicated video about a year ago. None of these Cobb LED strips have a waterproof version currently, so they are mostly suited for indoor projects or where you have a decent waterproofing because of what you're building it into, like for instance, my door number project. For all shots, we've been seeing the brightness setting in WLED set to 50%. As I mentioned, it's a bit hard to quantify overall brightness, but I'd say that the 60 LEDs per meter Cobb variant is a bit less bright than the 5050 package style variant. Starting with the 160 LEDs a meter variant though, because of the added amount of LEDs, I think it overtakes the brightness of the standard WS2812B and the even higher density ones are certainly more bright. Now, of course, you need to see that in perspective, they are more bright if they're, for instance, all lit up to the same color. If less LEDs are turned on, they will be as or slightly less bright. Now, in short, you can also compare this to the real world power sheet, and there you can see the 160 LEDs a meter variant also uses about the same, if just slightly more power than the WS2812B variant. Basically, input power equals brightness most often. It does depend a little bit on how efficient the LED itself is, but as a general overall rule, that can be stated. Also, a Cobb LED, so a tiny little LED in there, is generally more uh, efficient than one in a WS2812B5050 package. Thus, you can also use the power figures to pick out the right LED strip for your project if you already have one of the others also listed in the power tables. So you can compare and, you know, pick a higher or a lower one. This current shot also makes it very clear what the difference can be in regards to how the animations look. Where some animations are quite unclear and not visible well at all with 60 LEDs a meter or with the WS2812B, on the higher density LED strips, they look a whole lot better. This, as mentioned, is great for projects where the LEDs are either directly visible or very close by and can really make a big difference. However, if the LEDs are further away or for instance being projected against a wall and you're only seeing the reflection, the added resolution makes much less of a difference and it's generally not worth the hassle. The last thing to discuss about these LED strips is price. And that's actually quite interesting because previously the 332 LEDs a meter variant was quite expensive. For five meters, you were paying about 180 bucks and you can't really use five meters anyway. You have to chop it up and etc. But the newer variants, especially the 60 and the 100 LEDs a meter in five millimeter width are actually cheaper than normal WS2812B 60 LEDs a meter strip. Now, if you go for the 160 and the 10 millimeter variant, you're paying about a buck, maybe a buck and a quarter more per meter. But I'd say that's still pretty good versus the uh, the normal standard strip, basically. 
And uh, since that's a 10 meter or 10 millimeter, you don't have to inject it that often. And with 160 LEDs a meter, I think it makes a better alternative, for instance, than the 144 LED a meter uh, 50 50 style package LED strip. But anyway, here are the prices on the screen in total for 5 meter and, well, what, what you'd be paying per meter. These are based off of AliExpress. I'll try and also search for Amazon links, but most of this stuff is generally available on AliExpress and less so on Amazon, or at least then it's also cheaper on uh, AliExpress anyway. And uh, I'll have some affiliate links in the description if you want to help me out. Use one of those links and they'll give me a small kickback. But in all cases, these variants are now at least somewhat affordable versus the 332 LEDs a meter strip, which was just insanely priced. I'd say even the, the 240 LEDs a meter, but especially the 160 LEDs a meter strip is very nicely priced. Okay, well, I think that covers most topics I wanted to highlight in this video. Hopefully the shots have given you a decent impression on how these are different from traditional 50-50 style package LED strips we've been, well, using for years. I'm really excited for the options these open up, especially since some are also available in 5mm variants, or for instance running a 100 LEDs a meter or 160 LEDs a meter strip with a shallow diffuser will already perfectly blend these together, where this was much harder before. Also being Cobb LED strip, there are projects where these won't need any diffusion anymore at all. And because of the lower power consumption, they make a perfect combination with the dig to go Even with its limited budget of 15 watt, it can fully drive the 60 LEDs a meter Cobb variant with a 5 meter or 16 feet strip. And will still do well even with the 100 LEDs a meter variant. So, there was a lot of information in this video also oriented toward what these LEDs are best suited for, in my opinion, and that is shorter length projects. In one of the next videos, we're going to look at cob strips again, but that time we're going to look at 24 volt variants, including RGBW and IP68 variants, so waterproofed. Those are basically the opposite, very well suited for longer projects, but they come with their own downsides versus these 5 volt cob LED strips. If you have questions about these strips or about your setup, feel free to drop them in the comments or come to the Discord server and chat with lots of smart LED people there. I will also be making a addressable cob strip recommendation page on quinlled.info, which will live next to the normal addressable LED strip guide that's already on there. And well, that's all. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye-bye.